Hey guys, John Adamson, the Rehab and Documentation Guru. It's been a little while. I uh, just haven't felt like talking about anything. So <laughs> Anyway, I thought I'd bring up a case from the other day. And it was just a, a reminder to me that not always are we going to be able to do something that we would like to do for a patient. And not always is it appropriate, really, for us to do something for a patient. Case in point, uh, had a patient, elderly, let's just say above retirement age. He had gone through extensive abdominal surgery because he had uh, colon cancer. And uh, they had done um, an anastomosis after they'd removed uh, part of his colon. They would anastomosed the two ends of the remaining colon, and it failed. And he ended up with peritonitis and Anyway, so they put a col colostomy in him, and then they, they've got some other tubes in him, uh, I'm guessing involved in the drainage of um, some of the fluids and, and some of the other problems that he's got. And as a result of the extensive abdominal surgery, he ended up with what appears to be an obvious occlusion of his lymphatic drainage, basically from the lower abdomen down. Um, He's was very edematous. Uh, in fact, as I was interviewing him before my physical assessment, um, he shared with me that his testicles had become large, I mean, tremendously large with swelling. And they're only now coming down. Because when I first met him, he was up and walking. He was walking without a device. And if you look just at his gait, you would say, because of his size, too, he's an obese guy, you would say he's probably a diabetic, probably peripheral neuropathy, uh, and obviously he's going to have some balance dysfunction. But no, he just has huge testicles, and it's uncomfortable. And so he has to spread his legs while he walks and shorten his step. Uh, I don't mean to giggle about it because uh, I can only imagine what that feels like. And being a guy, I'm particularly sensitive to that idea. Uh, so anyway, we were talking very frankly about that, and he said, yeah, you know, the swelling's coming down, so now I feel like I can move better. And, um, and he said before the surgery, I would walk normally, and I trust his opinion on that. He was very active, uh, could go out shopping, did some yard work, so, you know, he was an active guy. And so uh, anyway, long and the short of it is he's got all these abdominal wounds, it's uncomfortable for him to do a lot because of the pull on those incisions. He's got these large testes. Uh, you know, he's on the standardized tests, he's not testing great. But when you look just at his balance, it seemed to be okay. And his strength, I'm not going to, you know, make him do anything strenuous. And I like functional strength tests. And he's got like three different incisions in his abdo abdomen that are still fresh, they're still healing, and and uh, he's with it. We both came to the conclusion, you know, I'm not a, a good fit as a discipline for you right now. Um, he's walking every day. He's, you know, he's noticing a gradual improvement in his functionality. Even though I have the objective data to back up that maybe PT could be beneficial, when I take in the whole of the man, I go, you just need to heal. <laughs> And that's what he felt, you know, he, at first he was kind of like, what are you here for? But as he started talking with me, he realized I was a reasonable guy. I'm not just pushing for my discipline. And frankly, he was out like way far. And I was kind of in the back of my mind, hoping <laughs> that he wouldn't need too much therapy because there was a lot of driving involved. Um, but regardless of that, I would have seen him three times a week if needed, you know, if he really needed it. But uh, he's like, you know, we both came to the conclusion, like, there's not really anything I can do right now. And I said, if after all the swelling goes down, if you're still having any issues, just let the nurse know and we'll get another uh, eval done and see what we can do at that point. And so he was very appreciative of that. And I, I can't help but think of my brothers and sisters in the rehab world who work in a sniff. Um, this obviously isn't so much the case anymore since uh, PDPM um, because you're not the driver of, of 
what pays the bills for the patient to be in the sniff anymore. And I've heard from enough therapists saying that they had their minutes cut drastically. But there are some uh, there are some agencies that are still pushing their therapists to get in on that Part A patient to deliver care <clears throat> and, believe it or not, to get somewhat higher intensity to get them out the door. Um, and, you know, you think about, like, uh, Navi Health or any navigator-type organization that's managing Medicare to try to push them out the door fast so rehab is pressured to get time in with that patient. And, frankly, there are some patients that come into these settings that just are not appropriate for a certain rehab because it's it's just a matter of time that they'll automatically get better because it's a medical concern. And if you solve the medical problem, then the rehab component gets taken care of. And so I feel for you guys who might find yourself in that situation. I don't know how often it happens, but from chatter I've seen uh, in the Facebook groups that I'm involved in, I would say it happens more frequently than some of you might expect. So anyway, never be afraid to say exactly what the patient needs. And if, it, if it's not therapy, uh, you know, stick to your guns. And, and I, I'm, I don't know what you're like. I'm assuming if you watch my channel, you value the things I've talked about. And you might be one that really educates your patients and you really seek to come to a consensus agreement on that care plan. And I don't always do that as well as I should. Uh, I, I sometimes identify problems and I say, and this is my plan to address this, rather than getting the consensus from the patient. But I, I've tried to, since especially getting back into clinical two and a half years ago, I don't know, two years ago. I just celebrated my two years. It seems longer. <laughs> but I, I try to really uh, include the patient in the discussion because I'm concerned about informed consent. Sorry, I just saw a cool SUV. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, make sure you get that buy-in. And sometimes that buy-in is going to be saying to them, this is what I can do, what do you think? And they say no, and you go, all right, I think you're being reasonable about that. Uh, I think people should be directing their own health care. And if you've informed them well enough, You've given them the tools to do so. And with that, I'm going to head to my first patient of the day. Hope you have a great one. Take care. God bless.